What's that? Oh, you need a BIOS update. No problem. Got you covered. Just hold tight for me for a minute. Well, I was just talking to the She-Hulk build, and it apparently needs a BIOS update. So if you want to learn how to do an Asus BIOS update, stick around. So that's right, the She-Hulk does need a BIOS update. And one of my best performing videos is actually a Gigabyte how to update your BIOS via Gigabyte motherboards. That's doing pretty good. So I want to push again, my last BIOS update for an Asus was done a couple of years ago. So I wanted to push it again and uh, running through step by step exactly how to do this and we won't waste any time with this. I'm going to kind of get right to it. This is just a BIOS update, nothing fancy, nothing special. The only thing you do require or need, you can do it a couple different ways. Some of them allow you to do it via internet. You can update it uh, that way. Um, I do it kind of the traditional way. Uh, you could do a BIOS flashback way, which I have demonstrate on, or demonstrated on a Gigabyte motherboard. Um, or was that a Gigabyte? Now I'm trying to think. Um, it's actually that board right there. Nope, that was an Asus motherboard. Sorry, that was an AMD platform, but it was an Asus motherboard. Uh, we did that uh, via the BIOS flashback. That's where we, you do not require any CPU, um, any uh, graphics card, or any, um, just trying to look back there, <laughs> any RAM. So uh, the only thing it requires from you is just a power supply and to turn it on. You can do it out of the case, in the case, doesn't matter. Um, but this one we're going to do it the old fashioned way. Uh, the only thing you need is a thumb drive and we'll get a shot of that here. I'm trying to make it focus. It is not focusing. There we go. So I just label mine a BIOS on there. This is a 16 gigabyte. Uh, preferably what you want to do is stay with anything small. Uh, 16 gigabytes are smaller. If you can get an eight, even smaller, it's not necessarily better, but you don't need, you could use a two gigabyte um, one. They don't really don't make them too much anymore. You might be able to find them, but 16 is probably one of the smallest you're gonna find around now. You could probably find some eight gigabyte ones and it does not need to be 3.0. Uh, you don't need to have a 3.0 speed. It doesn't have to be a fast one. These are very small files and um, uh, this is all you need. So uh, mine's a 16 gigabyte. This is a PNY. Uh, 2.0 and this is going to go as fast as the 3.0 as far as updating the BIOS so um, yeah so let's get right to it this is the only thing that is required of you but we are going to go ahead and check I do have another um, card here with my utilities and we're going to use what's called CPU uh, Z and that's going to let us know what BIOS version we have other than that we can go into the BIOS and actually check that but I'm going to use this little utility just to check to see what BIOS version I have. Uh, beyond that, we will be able to tell in the BIOS too, but I just want to show you and demonstrate that you can use it this way too, because uh, otherwise you have to shut down your PC, go figure out if you need a BIOS update, and then uh, through the BIOS, and then you would have to go and start your computer back up, and then go to the website and download your new BIOS to replace your current BIOS. So this allows us to um, stick with, uh, the, or leave the computer on, and then go and grab our, our um, uh, new BIOS without shutting down the computer first. So take a look at this. All right, and as we can see, we can see that I do have the uh, 12900KS as the Alder Lake. Um, and a bunch of other, you know, stuff you can check out in here for yourself. If we come over here to the main board tab, this is where you're going to find the motherboard manufacturer. So this is the Rogue Maximus Z690 um, formula, and this is by Asus. And if we come down a little further, we got BIOS, and our current version is 1720. 
So uh, we have we do have a date also associated with that, 8-12-22. Now if we just leave this up, it doesn't matter if we maybe put it over here or something, just to keep a reference and we open up, um, I gotta, uh, I actually have to get my keyboard. So if we open up a browser and then we type in the Asus, I might even have it, no I don't have it in here, I thought it might. Asus uh, Maximus Maximus uh, Z690 and we got the formula right down here and you could put in BIOS or drivers after that um, but our first results is right here it should bring you right to the uh, support page and we're gonna open this up a little further here and right over here all the way over um, not sure if you can see that let me pan over just a little bit oh yeah I guess you can see it alright so right over here where it says support not this support but this support down here part of the main page that is the support you're gonna click on and then we just wait a moment I remember we had version 1720. So we want to go to drivers and utility. And we go to right here, we go to BIOS and firmware. And we keep scrolling down. And please click here to confirm the BIOS model name. Oh, we have to choose. I don't know why they started doing this. There's got to be a reason, but I've noticed this recently. You got to like choose now the correct motherboard it's funny all right so this latest version is 2204 and we want to show all of them because i'm going to confirm that our bios is actually in here right here 1720 so we have three newer versions now you do not i repeat you do not have to go and and do every version in between them to get to the latest you normally 99 percent of the time you go right to the latest um, unless there's something in here that says something that's weird. Um, so we can also update the, um, the ME um, to a newer version, which I'm not going to do right now. Um, uh, ME just stands for uh, Management Engine, in case you're wondering. This is an uh, update code for the 13th uh, gen processors and an update microcode to the 12th gen processors. Uh, they may be, a, I don't know what the update for the 12th gen would have been, but there's something going on there. Uh, and we got, so the latest we have improved DRAM stability or uh, compatibility, excuse me, improved system compatibility and stability, update Intel ME firmware. So we could, um, We may be updating the ME regardless. So we want this one. So you're going to go right here and click a download. And now we can exit out of here. So if this wasn't open, let me just show you again. If these were not open, go right down here to your manila envelope. This is Windows 11, by the way. And go to your downloads folder. It's virtually the same in Windows 10. And this is just a bunch of other stuff I had downloaded. But what we want, let me get this stuff out of the way just to make it less um, confusing for you. And we want this guy, and we're going to do a right click, and we're going to hit extract all. Because see, that's a zip folder, and uh, we're just going to extract it all in the same spot. And right here, we have the renamer tool. You only need to use this renamer tool if you're doing a BIOS flashback. If you're not doing a BIOS flashback, in other words, with no CPU, RAM, or uh, uh, storage, or anything like that, if you're not, if you're doing it that way, you have to use the renamer tool. And that goes for pretty much any manufacturer. But um, otherwise, we just need the biggest file that's here. We're gonna copy it. 
and Windows 11 is funny. I'm still not used to it, but that's the copy right there. Now I need to um, put in the BIOS uh, thumb drive. Let me just get out of here so I can kind of show you. And so we have that copied, right? So now we're going to come over here to this PC just to kind of make it easy. And we can see we have a few different options where we can put it. But mine is labeled BIOS update. That's just how I named it. Uh, it makes it easy for me. So we're going to go ahead and open that up. Um, that is my thumb drive that I showed you in the beginning of the video. And right here, we are just going to paste it. That will just take a few seconds. And we are done. We now have the latest BIOS on the thumb drive ready to uh, install. All right, so I needed to jump back in here and just specify one thing. There's a couple other ways you can actually get your BIOS without using that uh, CPU-Z. And I just wanted to point them out in case you want to do it that way instead. CPU-Z does have and offers uh, some benefits to other things with information within it. But if you don't want to download that, I just find it very convenient <coughs> Excuse me, to use that and, and look up stuff. So... The other couple ways, and I'm just going to uh, point my camera right at your, uh, right at my um, screen here, and just uh, kind of show you verbatim. And excuse the wobbliness and the messy desk, but if you come right down here to the search box, now this is Windows 10, and you type in Run, or you just start typing Run, and you click on Run, you'll see a little box here that pops up. Now I have CMD opened up there. Now we can run it that way or we have what's called MS Info 32 and we click on that and that's going to give us this page layout. Now <clears throat> if we look right here, I'm trying to point it here, um, we have um, BIOS version slash date and we can see it says 1601. Now of course this is a different computer but this is uh, one way you can do it and you can see the BIOS version is 5.17.22. So if you needed to use it this way you can always use it this way. So just a couple other ways I just want to show you how you can access your BIOS information without actually rebooting the PC or um, downloading software if you really wanted to and now I'm going to go back to your regular scheduled program. Alright so I had to move some things around here so the lighting might be a little off compared to what it was in the beginning of the video but again we have our um, utilities thumb drive out of the machine now and now we have the BIOS labeled the BIOS uh, thumb drive in there and by the way I need to mention this because I totally forgot in the beginning make sure it is formatted the thumb drive is formatted into FAT32 if you don't it will not work um, I've had a few of those questions uh, before and so I just wanted to drive that point home also um, I'll, again make sure it's uh, 16 gigabytes or smaller it may work in 32 or 64 gigabytes um, but there are some older systems and some that are just uh, finicky and they want something smaller so in case you're not reading the file or it's not reading it it's probably because it can't read something that large uh, of a capacity so uh, just keep that in the back of your mind so what I'm going to do now it like I said it is downloaded it is on that bio the bio new bios is on that thumb drive so what we're going to do is now get into the bios I'm going to show you how to do that um, uh, through Windows 11. It should be about the same as Windows 10. I've never done it. We're going to try and try to figure it out. I'm only going to spend a couple minutes. If I can't figure it out, we're going to do it the old fashioned way. The old fashioned way would be just uh, rebooting the PC and like hitting your delete or F whatever key um, uh, to uh, rapidly. Uh, you're kind of just going to like spam it until it gets into the BIOS. That's kind of the old fashioned way. I'm going to try and do it through Windows 11 here uh, through the troubleshooter and take you on the journey through that one. All right, guys, let's try to figure this out together. If we come down here to the search box and we just type in uh, troubleshooter, um, troubleshooter settings, and let's see, we have accounts. Uh, Windows Update, Accessibility, yeah, this is uh, completely, or maybe Restore, 
Let's see. Don't see it there. System. Okay, we have uh, recovery. Okay, reset. See the recovery option? It says reset, advance, startup, go back. So that is what we want there. We do not, we want advanced startup, okay? We don't want to reset the PC. We just want advanced startup. That is all we want right there. That is what I was looking for. So just give this a moment and uh, be able to get into the system. Okay, so um, you may be able to see this blue screen just pop up. Um, and that took about maybe a minute and a half to fully shut down, reboot into this, maybe a little shorter than that. So anyway, we are going to go into, we're not going to continue, exit and continue. We, we're not going to use a USB device, even though it's on a USB device, because we're not doing a recovery. We're doing a troubleshoot, and then we want advanced options. And right here it says UEFI firmware settings changed. So this is basically going to go into the BIOS. And that's what we want. All right, guys. So here we are. We are in the BIOS. And I just want to show you and point out. You see right here at the top? I mean, I can use my hand. So right up here at the top. If you look all the way over to the left, you'll see BIOS version. That's our current BIOS version. Exactly what that piece of utility said it was. We have a build date of 8-12-22. So that's the last time, um, not the last time I got the BIOS got updated. That's just the last BIOS version date that was provided. So um, we're going to go over here to tools up at the top. This is for ASUS only right now. And we're going to go to the Easy Flash Utility. I'm hoping you can see that. I didn't even... Yeah, you can, you can see that. So all the way over to the left there on the top, it says Asus Easy Flash Utility 3. Or 3 Utility. And we go into there. And this is our storage devices. So this is the uh, all the storage drives and SSDs and NVMEs and uh, thumb drives that are plugged currently into your machine. It is reading the first one, which is correct, because you can see how this highlights as I go over it, and that is the BIOS that we want. So we're just going to select it. It says, please back up your BitLocker and recovery key. So if you had a BitLocker or something like that before updating this. So, and we're just gonna hit yes. Do you want to read this file? Yes, we do. So, and then we go, do you really want to update the BIOS? It really wants you to make sure you want to update this. So we can see the uh, the latest uh, uh, version here. And I've known about this for a while, but I just haven't done it. I wanted to get it on video. Uh, so it's been a couple of months here because we're in the beginning of February when I'm shooting this, actually. So uh, do you really want to update this BIOS? Uh, yes, we can see the model and the current version is matches the one that we downloaded. So we're just going to click yes. And now you can see the progress bar down at the bottom. Go grab yourself a drink. Don't touch anything else. Do not hit the exit button. Don't try to click on anything. Leave it be. And I will be back when this is done processing. All right, guys, so this right here just said uh, successfully updated it. Now, if you don't get to that button in time, and that was, what, five seconds, uh, it's going to reboot uh, on its own. So there's no sense in, in actually hitting the button. It'll just do it on its own. Now, some of these ASUS boards, especially if it's updating the ME, can take multiple reboots. Let it do its thing. If for some reason it goes on, I'd say more than 15, 20 minutes, uh, you definitely probably have a problem or it's done and you just have to basically kill the power and restart it. But aside from that, just let it do its thing. All right, that was about 20, 25 seconds. And right now, the... 
what does it say? The iOS, the iOS is up, no, it's got, the BIOS is updating. It's off the screen, the screen's not big enough. I thought iOS didn't sound right. So it says the BIOS is updating, pretty much do not shut down or reset the system to prevent system uh, damage or booting improperly or something it said. I'm just gonna kinda let you see what's going on with the PC in the background. You can see all, most of the um, lights are white now. And uh, I'm just kind of trying to let you see what's going on between the PC and the monitor. Um, if, you know, sometimes these do malfunction, but here we go. We got another signal. And now it's just saying, you know, you can press, or del uh, press the delete key or the F2 to enter the BIOS. So that's what you would do right there to enter the BIOS at this stage. So now we have uh, BIOS is updating Thunderbolt NVMe firmware, do not shut down to reset the system to prevent system boot up failure. Um, then it tells you the image size uh, written so far, how many uh, bytes have been written. Um, you might not be able to see that up in that corner, but it's just right up in here. Nothing, nothing really to read. Just let it keep doing its thing and I'm just making sure you can see the PC. All right, guys, so as you probably just saw, hello, um, I was just making sure that it is still recording here, and uh, as you just saw, I just switched to the screen. Of course, there's still stuff off the side of the screen. It's not grabbing everything, um, but we are at our current version now of 2204, and it just lists a bunch of other stuff uh, for your DDR5 and stuff like this. But important down here, it's not going to automatically go into the BIOS. You do have to hit F1 to continue uh, uh, to get into the setup. And then we can just load the optimized defaults if you wanted to, and then get out of there, and Windows will start normally. So if we hit F1, You can see now we're in the BIOS again. We are at the current version of 2204 and the BIOS build date is 113022. So we were successful in updating the BIOS. And now you can either hit F10. You can see down, uh, usually it says down here like F10 to exit. But if you come up here to the exit and then you can uh, load the optimized defaults if you wanted to or save changes um, an exit. So we're just going to, you have not made any changes to BIOS. Yeah, okay, whatever. And this should boot back into Windows now without a problem. It may take slightly longer than normal to get back into Windows, but it will. All right, guys, you see that little flub there where it kind of looked like it was going to go into Windows, but then it didn't. So you got to be patient with these. Just give it enough time, ample time, like what you think you should give it, give it at least double or triple that time just to make sure. I know if you're impatient, you want things done right away. Sometimes it just doesn't happen, but we're back in and that's it. So, all right, let's wrap this up. All right, guys, so it is that simple. It only takes... 15, 20 minutes to really do it all if you're not doing all this lighting and shooting like I am. Um, but with that said, make sure, I'm going to drive this home, make sure it is um, formatted into FAT32 in a 16 gigabyte memory stick or smaller. And otherwise, you could run into potentially some issues and you'll be asking questions in the comments of why it's not working. And then I'm going to ask you the simple things is this FAT32, is it this, is it that? So uh, that's the most basic things uh, you can do. And you don't need anything better than a 2.0. So if you have one of these laying around, perfect. USB 2.0, perfect. Uh, not that you can't use a 3.0, 3.1, 3.2, or the new uh, 4.0 uh, USB. But they're unnecessary unless you just got something laying around and you don't want to buy something else. So, uh, to wrap this up, um, guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I ran through every step-by-step -step, uh, in the process of updating your um, Asus motherboard of any um, 
a model of Asus motherboard, it's pretty much identical, if not the same, unless you're talking about something extremely old. Uh, or something in the future, you know, 10, 10 years down the line where it just all of a sudden changed. So, uh, but anyway, guys, leave a comment down below if you wish. Feel free to ask any questions. I do get back to you uh, as soon as I can. Um, and don't forget to hit that like, that like button, that likes button, the like button, and uh, give me a thumbs up just to um, show your little support to the channel. And um, feel free to share this and subscribe and hit that little bell icon next to the subscription button. That way you can get notified for any future videos that I do post. And that's it, guys. Until next time, take care.